How's it going, everybody? It's Jakeagle the Eagle, and I'm back at it again. I've got some exciting news for you guys. I have just completed my game development classes yesterday. Yesterday, so I am now proficient enough to start making games in Unity C Sharp. So that's what this video is actually going to be about today. I'm going to go ahead and start developing my very first Android game for you guys, and its name is going to be Punchball. And the basic concept of how it works is that when the game appears, you have these balls in the phone screen that you have to tap. However, these balls can bounce off of each other, and they can bounce off of these walls here. And how I'm gonna have it is that you have to have you have to hit a certain amount of balls within a certain amount of time in order to go to the next level. But the entire physics of how this works is something like this: the balls start bouncing, you hit them as much as you can. If I could actually hit them, and bam, and then you know you go on to the next level. So yeah, let's go. Today I'm going to be working on the actual ball spawner system and the scripts for it so we can continuously start getting balls through here. And then um, making it stop spawning balls whenever you either win the game or uh, lose it. And then the next video I hope to get to working on the timer system for the first level. So let's get to it. <laughs> So if we go over to Visual Studio here, you see I've just opened up the script for uh, the ball spawner here. And you see we have the void start, void update functions. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to start making functions and then eventually a couple of coroutines so we can get um, the ball spawning and the ball spawning randomly within the uh, top frame of the panel and uh, spawn one by one and not all at once with void update. So let's get going with that. Alright, so as you can see in this section here, I'm currently working on the uh, all the variables as well as the instance for uh, this candy, or the, not candy, these ball uh, spawner script here, so that I have all the objects that I need, I have all the variables that I need to make this work. Alright, a little bit of explanation of what I'm doing here. Um, I'm already putting a uh, function inside of void start, even though I don't actually have any of my own custom functions set in yet. The reason why is because I know that when I uh, start the game, I want this function to be called, and this function is actually going to be tied to a coroutine, so that way it doesn't just only go once and then um, it's done for the rest of the thing. So I already know that this is going to be a coroutine and I already know what I want to name it so I'm just going to go ahead and put it in void start. Already at this point all of the functions have been made that are going to be um, they're going to be used to mainly spawn the balls here. And now what we're going to be working on is the I enumerator for the coroutines and then two uh, custom functions in order to start and stop, start and stop, oh I can't speak, the I enumerator and the other coroutines.
All right, final thing that we're going to be working on here is we're going to have a couple of more public uh, custom functions on here in order to start and start and stop the coroutine, and then we're going to save it, throw it into Unity, and see how it's working so far. Alright, the ball spawner script is ready to go, so now the balls should spawn from the top here down into the field, should uh, spawn randomly as soon as we get it all set up. Let's go ahead and get the max x here, so before we do that, let's actually go ahead and reset the position of the ball spawner here so we know where it's at. Reset. Let's go ahead and move it up. Assign a tag to it so we know where it's at. And there we go. And we're going to get the max position here. And it looks like to be about 3. So max x is going to be our 3. Spawn interval. Let's go ahead and make it 2. And we're going to make a set of 4 balls here. And then we're just going to drag our prefabs for each ball into each of these folders. And now when we play it, the script should work. Okay, so the script is working. It is spawning the balls randomly. However, I may need to tighten up the shot group as far as where they can spawn because they're kind of falling out of the uh, screen here. So let's go ahead and make the max x say 2.5. Okay, great. Now, as you can see, I wrote the coroutine uh, start and stop here. However, even after the U win, the balls still are spawning. So I had to open up my game manager and um, insert some code in there in order to get the balls to stop spawning on at win. I just got it finished here. All I had to do is add the instance into my game manager and let's see if it will actually stop the balls now. And it looks like it has. The only balls that we have here now are uh, the balls that were left at the beginning. All right, so the spawner script is now working and it's working properly. However, there are a couple of things I would like to address here. The first thing is whenever the balls are spawned in, the top half here is still open. So if they bounce high enough, they can technically go out of the screen. So I want to find a way to where once they hit in the area, they stay in the area. And another thing is too, when I do hit four, the balls that I may have missed on screen are still on screen. So I'd also like to find a way to get them to just disappear as soon as at when happens. So um, this will require a little bit of research before I do. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this while I do some research. And then I will come back to y'all. Alright guys, I'm back. And on the Unity website here, they actually have a for each that uh, public void, a custom function that has a for each loop. So what I'm planning to do is entering this on Unity and then using it in the win section to see if all the balls will be destroyed whenever I win the game. So let's go ahead and see how that works. All right, so here we have a problem here. It destroys everything, but it destroys everything. So what I need to do is find a way I can make it specific to this uh, particular, to the balls only. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna have to do is in the for each loop section here, 
um, add tags to my balls and then have it find objects of that tag and then destroy it. So let's go, let's go ahead and see how this works here. Okay, so that took a while. However, I believe I may have found a uh, script that may actually work. So now I have to actually go in and add a tag. And I'm going to go ahead and add a new tag with the name Uh, Hold on, I actually have to change the tag in here to clone. There we go. And then we're going to recompile this here. All right, so let's go ahead and take this untagged. We're going to add a new tag to it, and it's going to be clone. Okay, and then we're going to add a new tag to this as well. It's going to be clone. You are also going to be clone, and you are also going to be clone. Now, theoretically, what should happen is as soon as win happens, the destroy balls function will get called, and all the clones will be destroyed. So let's see what happens. All right, so it stopped spawning, but it didn't destroy all the clones. So I might have the wrong thing set as a tag. That's probably it, because I'm spawning what's already on screen and not the prefabs that come out. So let's go ahead uh, and um, go ahead and go into our prefabs and have them tagged here as a clone. 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 Alright, let's see if this works. If not, there's something else wrong and I have to dig deeper. Aha! Alright, ladies and gentlemen, I was right. I had it on the prefab, or I had it on the actual thing, and on the prefab. So. Yippee! All right, so that's two things down. We've got the ball spawner to work exactly how we want it to work, and we got the um, balls to be destroyed on win. So now the final thing I want to be able to do today before I call this video quits, because we're already running at about an hour here, and I got to speed this up and film more. Um, I want to try to see if I can um, get the balls to stay inside this boundary here as soon as they spawn in and cross the buttons cross the line so for this I'm gonna actually have to reach out to one of my discord servers for this so again I'm gonna stop the recording for just a second and then come right back to you guys so thank you for chilling with me alright so here we are back at it again alright so here's what we're gonna do what I'm gonna try to do is use the box collider as sort of a gate what I want to do is when the ball spawner is actually spawning balls then the box collider will turn off and allow the ball to fall however when the ball spawner isn't spawning anything then the gate is actually going to come back on so that way everything else is in here everything else that is in here is um, 
everything else in here will stay in the box. So let's see how it works. Okay, so it should be set false right now. The box collider should be set false. Alright, well, while I'm here and trying to figure out this code, I'm actually going to demonstrate what I actually want to do here. So let's go ahead, turn this off, spawn, or turn this off, turn it back on, turn it off. Okay, well, <laughs> this is kind of a bad. Alright, let's try this again, shall we? It's false. Boom, on, boom. Well, you get the idea. It's supposed to turn off and then turn back on when the ball actually reaches the field. So, I'm going to figure this out, and then I'm going to get back with you guys. Hey guys, quick update for you here. So, um, I couldn't actually figure out the code. I, I spent the last few hours working on this. I couldn't figure out any codes that would work to make this... Um, actually have the balls fall in and then as soon as they come in not come back out so as a simple fix I just put the ball spawner inside of the block a little bit so it looks like it's coming through the blocks when they spawn however without them actually having you know Not actually having them come through and having to write code for it. I eventually do hope to have some code written out for it that will make it a little bit better, but as of now, this is a simple fix. So, this is the end of my first video, y'all. So, what we did today is we made the ball spawner system. We made it spawn balls randomly. We made them spawn one at a time without exploding. We made the balls disappear when you actually win the game. And we got the balls to actually stay in the game screen for now. So now, next up on the list, we are actually going to fix an issue with the UI where the restart button isn't working. I have to re -go, uh, redo my scripts for that to see what's actually going on. And then we're going to work on adding in the timer system. So that will be in our next video. Goodbye.